Leva Legacy Roundtables are designed to highlight the tools and techniques it takes to plan a successful transition. Joining me today are Josh Sylvester of Legacy by Design and John Hohenberger, a second generation farmer from Leland, Illinois. John, you have or are participating in the succession planning process, really from two different sides of your family. Can you give us a thumbnail sketch of your experience? I'd be happy to, Kevin. On my wife's side of the family, where we currently farm today, um, her parents have both passed away, and we've gone through the initial stages of uh, succession planning and transition. Mm -hmm. We've identified a successor to our plan, which is our son, Kurt, and we're developing a plan now, a business plan. On my uh, my side of the family, my parents now are still living. That sounded like a commitment. I just want to hit you on that one. Go ahead. A, a commitment. Well, well, maybe we can talk about commitments for that. But okay. uh, on my on my side of the family, uh, my sisters and my my mom and my dad are all there, and we're just starting the initial process and discovery, and talking about uh, what what we want to do, what the family wants to do, and uh, how to get started at this process. Now, you said one of the unique features is that your folks are still there to weigh in where Sue's folks have passed away. That's correct. Can you speak about that just a little bit? You know, the planning process is important for everyone to uh, develop a, a long-term confidence in, in what's going on. And it's like planting trees. You can either plant maples or you can plant oaks. And oaks just take a lot longer. And the planning process for this is, is like planting oak trees. It's a long-term process. What's the process look like, Josh? Well, Kevin, we take our families through a, a very defined six-step process. And it starts in consultation. And uh, the next step is discovery, where we are with your mom and dad today. Um, through that, we learn a little bit about your objectives, what you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are. Are the family's vision aligned? And then we move into uh, uh, presenting a preliminary plan. And we try to take what we thought we heard you say and put it on paper. And then as a family, we go through those objectives we go through some possible recommendations, and you get to see it on paper and feel the weight of it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we might make adjustments or some modifications and move to a, a final plan. And in that final plan, the most important part of that is uh, implementation schedule. We can do a lot of work, Kevin. We spend a lot of time in discovery, a lot of time helping you define your objectives. If we don't implement that plan, it's all for naught. And then most of the time, our plan is a very long term, as you said. It's a journey. It's not a transaction. It takes a number of years at times. So we want to make sure to meet at least once a year to make sure the plan is on track. What, what kind of experience has it been for you, John? What kind of hiccups have we hit along the road? I, I think the, the experience has been good for a number of reasons. Uh, it's forced uh, our family, my wife and I, and our children to come to grips with what we really want to do how we really want to operate, and what's really important. And I think the, the hiccups can be where sometimes we'll miss communication or we'll have lack of, uh, of the same long-term goals. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just not because they don't jive. It's just because we haven't talked about it. But some of those things that we learn that we don't have the same long-term goals, aren't those good because now we've got them out on the table? We get to all look at them? Oh, absolutely. It, it just points out the fact that we all live in different little areas and the fact that, you know, we have different needs and wants that we want to take care of and that in the long-term process, you got to, you know, it forces you to decide what really is important. And objectives can change over time. What, oftentimes a family comes in thinking they know what they want. Absolutely. We meet, we have a family meeting, and we learn the diff different perspectives of all the family members, and our objectives can change. Not only the objectives can change, but the method and how you handle it changes mm -hmm. as well. I mean, it can be a, it can be a, you can be next door neighbors and not uh, communicate as well as you can from a distance. It, it's all it depends on how things are laid out and how it's all handled. Mm -hmm. Implementation is really key and follow up. So, what would make the process better? You know, making the process better probably is largely defined in uh, in your success, and if it's working. You know, sometimes the rule is if it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I think at the same time, being an engineer, you're always you're always looking at things. Well, how can I analyze it? How can I make things better? Mm -hmm. 
and I think it's an evolving process. It's not static. But you said success, and that's a big word to a lot of people. So that's based on your objectives or the objectives of the family, right? Absolutely. One of the first uh, questions that we ask when we meet with a family is, how do you define success? When we take you through this process, and when we reach the other side and we're finished, what's a successful engagement look like for you? I think the successful engagement would involve a number of parameters, but you know, you'd certainly got to look at, you know, long-term family security. Mm -hmm. You've got to look at the financial aspects of it. Mm -hmm. You've also got to look at development. You know, is there someone that you're working with in your family that has a long-term vision? Is there someone that we need to develop? I mean, it's it's a, a open-ended open-ended lineup. There's no close, quick answers for it. I think it's a very self-evolving, developing process. Josh, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on Chalk Talk, I'll ask Josh to elaborate on the keys to a successful planning engagement and the warning signs of failure. We'll explore some of the tips you should consider to improve your situation. Josh, what are the keys to a successful family engagement? I think the three main keys, Kevin, are communication, is paramount. In our family meetings, we like everybody to be involved and communicate, and as well as when they go home after the meeting to communicate. I think a commitment to the process is critically important. It's very difficult, and we want people to commit and stick with it. It can take time. And then a readiness. People have to be ready to accept change and to move forward and, and step into different roles and responsibilities through this process. Can I elaborate on that just a little bit? Because sure. not just accept change, but grab change and say, we're, we want to change to mold into what we need to to survive and, and, and then eventually thrive into the future. Is yeah, that correct? That would be accurate, yes. Okay. What, else, what else might be key to the process? Having a facilitator okay. is key to the process. Uh, it helps when a family's in a meeting, provide some structure, and allow people to feel that they can speak openly and freely. Okay, okay. What might get in the way? What are indications of failure? I think the number one indication of a failure is uh, dissimilar objectives. Um, when we sit down with a family, we help them define their objectives. Okay. And we try to create shared objectives among the family and a shared vision on where we want to be three, five, ten years out in the future. When we talk about shared objectives, are we talking about pinpoint objectives or are we talking about broad objectives of the family? Because not everybody's at the same place at the same time, right? No, we, we, have to, we have to pull in everybody's perspective and what everybody wants to accomplish, but we have to give the operation a voice and know where we want the operation to be long term and what everybody's involvement in the operation is. You said give the operation a voice. What does that mean? Oftentimes we look at a succession plan and, and approach it from either a tax angle or a legal angle, and we don't know, know how it affects the operation. So we always have to compare the, the objectives of the family to what the objective of the operation is. Okay, so you mean objective of the operation as a business entity that maybe I, I often refer to endows the family for the long term, right? That's right. If, if maintaining the integrity of the operation is paramount, we have to do everything we can to strengthen that operation. So one last question. Where does a family go to start? They can go a number of different places. Workshops are good. Um, but what we start with a family meeting. Have the family sit down, have a meeting, discuss what they want to see happen and what they want to accomplish. Thank you, Josh. Up next, a Wisconsin legend leading his state's charge to once again become America's Dairyland. Jim Ostrom on Legends of Leadership.